The Jesuit order, with all their subterfuge, deceit and wickedness, sickened Europe of what they perceived to be the Christian religion. Just like when Catholics were keeping people locked in ignorance to perpetuate their own lust for power during the Dark Ages, just like when they were launching crusades and inquisitions and imposing torture and death on anyone who didn't conform to their faith, just like when they were amassing wealth at the expense of innocent people using extortion, fear and intimidation, this had all been conducted under the banner of the Christian cross. When they committed their atrocities, they did so using the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when people saw all this, they quite understandably thought they were seeing true Christianity. When they saw the Jesuits, they thought they were seeing a Christian order. When they saw Catholicism, they thought they were seeing true faith. They thought they were seeing the natural outworking of God's religion, and so they turned on that God. This anger towards the wickedness of the Jesuits and Catholicism ignited a movement called the Enlightenment. Today God's reputation is still unfairly tarnished in the same way by the acts of the Catholics and Jesuits. For example, when a Christian condemns Muslim terrorists for blowing up buildings in the name of Allah, it's not uncommon to hear a retort along the lines of, well, Christianity doesn't exactly have a good track record either, does it? What about the Crusades? Or what about the Inquisition? And many Christians are either left without an answer to this, or feel like they have to defend the Crusades or attempt to pass it off as a mere blot in the copybook of Christian history. The fact is that the Crusades were not a Christian endeavour at all, they were a Catholic endeavour, and as I've hopefully shown in the previous section, those are very different things. As I also hope to show, many of the people being tortured and killed by the Catholic Inquisition were in fact true Christians. That's not to say that Christians have always behaved impeccably, but the gods behind Catholicism are Baal, Asherah, and ultimately Lucifer or Satan. As we've seen, the Jesuit order in particular was dedicated to the Asherah goddess, but many Christians still don't understand this, let alone non-Christians, and I hope I've done something to clear that up. When I think of the Jesuits, I tend to think of them as spiritual suicide bombers. Sure all the people of the nations of Europe turned on them, and sure they were run out of every country in Europe and ruined their reputation, but vitally for Satan, at the exact same time, they also took down God's reputation with them. People turned on the god they thought the Jesuits represented. It was fifth column tactics. The Jesuits pretended to be a part of the thing they wished to destroy. So in the 18th century, for the very first time in world history, in an attempt to escape all the religious turmoil that had dogged the world ever since the Catholic Church had risen to power, people attempted to create a godless society which would be free of the kind of corruption and tyranny they had become accustomed to from that Roman Church. We sometimes think of the Enlightenment as a neutral movement to pursue reason and science, as some kind of natural evolution of mankind, where a light bulb suddenly went off above our heads and we realised God was silly. In reality, it was a reaction to something. It was first and foremost, at its heart, an anti-God movement. Reading the quotes of the intellectual leaders of the time, this becomes apparent. Voltaire said, you will notice that in all disputes between Christians since the birth of the Church, Rome has always favoured the doctrine which most completely subjugated the human mind and annihilated reason. He also said, As you know, the Inquisition is an admirable and holy Christian invention to make the Pope and the monks more powerful and turn a whole kingdom into hypocrites. He also said, Every sensible man, every honourable man, must hold the Christian sect in horror. H. G. Wells said, The greatest evil in the world today is the Christian religion. Everywhere in the world there are ignorance and prejudice, but the greatest complex of these, with the most extensive prestige and the most intimate entanglement with traditional institutions, is the Roman Catholic Church. It presents many faces to the world, but everywhere it is systematic in its fight against freedom. You see how they use the words Christian, Rome and Catholic Church interchangeably. These quotations highlight the fact that the Enlightenment thinkers saw no distinction between Christianity and Catholicism. They were looking primarily at the atrocities of the Catholic Church and deciding that if this was the end result and religion of God, then the answer was to abandon that awful God. Instead, they would turn to knowledge and science for the answers. They would make themselves the centre of all things. Like Adam and Eve, they would turn away from the tree of life and put their hope in the tree of knowledge. Like Adam and Eve, they would not see that they had in fact been deceived by the serpent who had whispered into their ears that God was a wrathful deity of hate intent on keeping their minds in darkness and ignorance. 
The early Enlightenment thinkers had a fairly big problem, however, in their attempt to create a godless society. You see, if they took God out of the picture, they had no idea where all this came from and how it all got started. The idea of evolution, which suggested that all things could be explained without any kind of creator at all, did not gain public acceptance until Charles Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species, and this book wasn't published until 1859. Therefore, the Enlightenment thinkers in the hundred years prior to this time, although they perhaps would have liked to abandon the Christian God altogether, if they were being intellectually honest, could not. They still had need of some kind of higher power to explain how the world came to exist in the first place. The world couldn't just pop into existence, something must have caused it. No realistic alternative to God that could be backed up by reason and science was available to them at the time. Therefore, a great many of them tended to settle on a belief system known as deism.